Hey guys, welcome back to the video. So in this video, we'll be talking about environmental biotechnology. So previously we talked about ecosystem and some of its components. So in this video, we'll be talking about types of ecosystems and its broader ranges. So let's just get started with this. So as you can see, the types of ecosystem has mainly two types, which can be natural or artificial. So the natural ones include aquatic ecosystem and terrestrial ecosystem whereas the artificial ones include a cropland, aquarium, park and kitchen gardens. Moving on with this, I'll be explaining all of the natural and artificial stuffs in details. So let's just talk about the services which uh, ecosystem provides to us, which can be provisional services, uh, which are primary production, food, water resources, which can be regulating services, which uh, include climatic regulation, soil fertility, pollination, water, bio biochemical cycles and other regulatory stuffs and lastly we have the cultural services which is the aesthetic spiritual recreational social and educational stuffs this is a pie chart as you can see for the ecosystem uh, sort of a round diagram which includes all of the services that ecosystem renders to us so moving to moving on so we have some of the negative human influences on sensitive ecosystems which can be ecosystem of land mountains evergreen forests affected by deforestation overpopulation loss of biodiversity dumping solid waste water air pollution river marine ecosystem affected by pollution and overfishing so these are some of the negative effects which are caused by humans which may deplete the beautiful ecosystem that has been made by nature so there is another climatic change that is brought by uh, air pollution, greenhouse effect, ozone depletion. So there are a lot of many things that has that uh, lead to the consequences and the degradement of the society. There is another pact which is the Montreal Protocol, which is an international treaty to protect ozone layer by phasing out the production of a number of substances believed to be responsible for ozone depletion layer. So this is a something that is good. I guess something great, uh, which is an international treaty to protect the ozone layer so that uh, a lot of things so that the greenhouse effect gases won't rise up to that level and the ozone layer is saved. So this is a basic uh, uh, definition or a diagrammatic definition for you all for the greenhouse effect. So as you can see the sun rays strike here so the, if the ozone layer is very thin the direct rays or the uv rays would enter the earth and may destroy or very as we know uv rays are very harmful for humans as direct contact to uv rays may cause cancers so a ozone layer a thick ozone layer is very important for resisting for resistance to uv layer so moving on with this and also there is one more fact that is the largest ozone hole in the record is size of North America. So the size so, do, so, at, so at the point where North America is located, the, the largest ozone hole we have seen or the size of the ozone layer is the thinnest. All right. Moving on with this. So let's just talk about some of the properties of ecosystem, ecological ecosystem. So which can be spatial and temporal networks, interdependence, diversity, complexity. We have ecological cycles, which can be unidirectional, flow of energy and resources, uh, as well as there are as there are cycling processes as well. So we have development, which can be succession, co-evolution, soil formation. We have dynamic balance, which is maintained with type of homostasis, which is known as homostasis, uh, which is the feedback control, self-regulating, organized flexibility, uh, we have boundaries which have scales and limits. We have biodiversity, we have biogeochemical cycles. So this is basically ecological cycles or some of the important properties of eco cycle which rotates in a circular manner for the existence. Going with this, we have some of the uh, important ecological dynamics which include the primary production, secondary production, ecological pyramids, energy and biomass flow, food chain, food web, tropic levels and biogeochemical bio cycles. So talking about the primary production. So primary production is the amount of light energy converted to chemical energy by plants, which are the autotrophic ones uh, during a given period of 
time per unit area is called primary production. Uh, so under primary production, we have uh, gross and net production. So gross production is the quantity of organic matter produced per unit of time. And net production is the gross production minus metabolic losses, which is through respiration and excretion. So, the no, so this is something easy. So gross production is the total production occurred during a particular period of time. And net production is a gross product minus the metabolic losses, which are through respiration or excretion. So coming to secondary production, we have all biomasses produced per unit of time by organisms are called consumers. So these are the secondary production or producers. So the, second, uh, the energy that is not used by producers can be passed on to other organisms, which are the heterotrophic consumers. So I will show you, I will showing you a pyramidal curve, how the energy gets transferred. So let's just talk about the econo ecological niche. So which comes under the secondary producers. So place where an organism lives and the role that an organism performs in its habitat. So which is called a niche. All right. So where they live and all the uh, daily activities are performed, which is, it is called ecological niche for an organism and all the biological, physical and chemical factors that a species need to survive and stay healthy and reproduce. And niche is unique for every species. All right. So niche is something that is not the same for every species but it is different for all the species and it involves all strategies and adaptations of species uses in its environment. Also, this is how organisms obtain food, mates and production from predators and no two species can occupy the same niche alone. So, so definitely they cannot survive in the same niche because they have to adapt to the uh, environment and to the uh, they need to obtain food as well at the same time. So that is why they have unique niches unique for every species. So moving on with this, we have some of the components of ecosystems, which are uh, some of the two main components, which are the abiotic and the biotic components. So the abiotic and uh, abiotic or the non-living components include inorganic substances, organic compounds and climatic factors. All right. So these are some of the non-living components. Talking about the living components or the biotic components, we have autotrophs or producers, we have heterotrophs or consumers, or we have saprophytes or decomposers. Moving on with this. So these are some of the easy stuff. I hope so. That is very, very easy. So let's just talk about the components of uh, ecosystem that we just went through. So these are dependent on the uh, abiotic ones or the non-living ones and the living ones or the biotic components. So the abiotic components or the non-living ones include the physical factor, inorganic substances and organic substances that we just went through. So the physical factors are temperature, humidity, light, atmospheric pressure and the inorganic substances are water, oxygen, carbon dioxide, nitrogen. The organic substances here are proteins, carbohydrates, lipids and the biotic components include the producers which are the autotrophs, the consumers which are the heterotrophs, decomposers which are the saprotrophs. All right. So it's all written here. Also, the specific abiotic factor represent geographical and climatic features of particular ecosystem. So definitely abiotic factors include all of the climatic conditions and factors under which they will perform. So the biotic and abiotic interactions and influences on ecosystem. So these, as you can see, the abiotic components are which are the, so these are the plant producers, which are the living things. This is the consumers. This is the decomposers and then the nutrient cycle goes on. So this is the biotic components and this is all the biotic components. So this is a line demarcates the biotic and the abiotic components. So this is the biotic one. This is the abiotic one. So the sun gives energy to the plants for growth and these plants produce food which are consumed by the consumers and these after these consumers which are decomposed with the help of after the death of the consumers, these are decomposed with the help of fungi or bacteria which are known as decomposers or saprophytes. Then again, this cycle goes on and on. So talking about some of the biotic, abiotic interactions, we have biotic interactions are density independent. All right. So this is something very important. Unlike biotic interactions and abiotic interactions are density independent. So this is a small difference between the two. So biotic interactions are density independent uh, and abiotic factors involves density independent factors. So definitely both are independent. Definitely there is no 
the difference between the, these two terms but as we know biotic and abiotic factors are something there are differences that like they are living and non living stuffs so biotic include all the factors which are definitely performed by plants and there on the cycle goes on and the abiotic factors all are the physical and the climatic changes all right so both are density independent and these factors affect population independent of population density all right so there are some of the important star factors and then there are some vital processes such as growth nutrition reproduction which depend on which are very much depend very much on these interactions so let us keep this video till here i'll be continuing the next video from here on so stay tuned and thank you for watching this video